Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Summer 44. So today, guys, we do our Group B reaction to Copa America, guys. So we got here Ecuador 3, Jamaica 1. Now, this was a bit of a weird game to discuss because I feel like Ecuador were the better team, and I do think they deservedly won. But I'm not... I don't think the manner in which they won this game is fair. I don't think this game should have ended 3-1. In fact, I think a fair score line would have been like a 3-2, like a 2-1. But as we all know in football, it's not about what's fair, what's not fair. It's about showing up and getting the results. And you got to give men that for Jamaica because uh, Ecuador, because Ecuador that first half were crooked. Jamaica, Jamaica were awful that first half, really, really abysmal. Like it was so pathetic. Like look at the amount of shots Ecuador had that first half. They were fantastic. They were running the show. The amount of clear cut chances they got. The only issue was the amount of shots on target. They only got two shots there, which is poor. But that first goal, man, crazy, crazy goal there. It was from Hinkape. It's actually regarded as an own goal, which I think is a bit odd, but I guess it took a little deflection there from the corner. A very good goal there, very good goal. And then for me, the penalty. Now, here's the thing with the penalty, guys. Was that a pen? I personally don't think it's a pen. But if you're going to give that, then you have to be consistent. And that's going to be a consistent theme I'm going to have in this video. So I'm going to actually refer to this again. Anyways, Kendrick Pius scores a penalty to make it 2-0. And J J Ecuador were cooking 2-0 up, and I was like, yeah, it's over. J Jamaica is hopeless. I don't see Jamaica do anything. And Ecuador, uh, they're, they're crew sailing, crew sailing. But then the second half started, and this is where things got very interesting, because Ecuador, Jamaica actually started very strongly in the second half. They actually started creating good chances. They started actually forcing Ecuador to defend. Uh, Pinoc had the great effort there that was 54th minute blocked. 68th minute Nicholson, 72nd Nicholson, and Sepharis. But then this goal, man. Great goal from Antonio. Great goal. Really horrible defending there from Ecuador. I don't know what Ecuador was doing there defensively. Shambles defending. And it was 2-1. And at this point, I'm like, okay, maybe, who knows? Maybe Jamaica could actually get a result here. Uh, and Jamaica were actually playing really well. But the thing for Ecuador is that as bad as they were in the second half, they were still causing issues to Jamaica's back line because Jamaica defensively that second half were very poor despite having so much possession. And Ecuador were able to counter so easily. Ecuador were able to counter. And had it not been for um for the amount of misses Ecuador had, it could have been a different game. Now we talk about this moment, the 74th minute. For me, Ecuador, uh, Ecuador almost, uh, Jamaica almost did the comeback. They almost did the comeback. They actually had a goal cleared off the line and then it hit the hand. And for me, that's a penalty. And the 74th minute, that's a crucial moment of the game, and it has to be a pen. Because if you're going to give a pen for that handball in the first half, you got to give the pen here. you got to be consistent. You either give that as a pen, or you don't have either decision to be a pen. Personally, in my opinion, I feel like both. I feel like this one is very clear. It's a stonewall penalty. It's a stonewall penalty. This one's clear. Clear, obvious. It's a clear, obvious handball, and it should have been a penalty, in my opinion. Nonetheless, the board didn't give it. Uh, the Jamaica were um, uh, pushing men forward for the equalizer. So desperate. But at classic Jamaica style, they couldn't, They were so bad defensively. Ecuador were able to counter. And they got the equalizer there. And that pretty much ended the game. It pretty much ended the game here. The 90 for, uh, 91st minute, Minda were there with the goal. And it's just a shame. Because I honestly feel like that penalty kind of changed the game. Carlos Gruzo got the assist there. And... It's a shame because I actually feel like Jamaica played well, but Ecuador were just clinical. You know, that's the thing, whereas Jamaica weren't. And I think that penalty decision did have an impact in the game because who knows that that penalty was given would have been, and it would have probably ended in a draw. I don't think Ecuador would have won this game. But at the same time, we never know. I'm using hindsight here, you know. So for Ecuador, as I said, man, they got to be more consistent than this because this scoreline, this, this kind of flatters Ecuador a lot because I don't think Ecuador were that much better. I actually think this was a pretty close game. Um, and if I had to choose a winner, I'd probably still edge with Ecuador because I do think Ecuador were the better team. But it's just a score line I'm not happy with. But, you know, it is what it is. For Jamaica, man, they're pretty much out of the Copa America now because now they have zero points. And the next game is um, going to be against um, Venezuela. And even if they do win that game, it probably will not be enough for them to advance because even if they do win, one of Venezuela, uh, Ecuador, or Mexico is bound to get points. So for Venezuela, uh, for Jamaica, man, it's another disappointment of a tournament to finish ball in the group. And this is what Jamaica did, man. This is what Jamaica is is capable of. You know, they always they they always have such a talented team. 
but they always, always underperform. And that's the sad reality for Jamaica. And it's a reality you have to live with because I actually want Jamaica to do well. I actually, as an avid CONCACAF fan for the United States, it is a shame that Jamaica keeps imploding all the time like this. But it is what it is. We just have to accept it. And that's just the reality of Jamaica for you guys. Now we're going to talk about the other game. A Venezuela won and Mexico nil. And I have a lot of harsh things to say. Mexico were the better team. Let me make that clear and start saying this right now. Mexico were the better team by far that first half. Je Venezuela were so poor that first half. It was almost feeling like Venezuela were playing like the underdogs in some ways. Mexico really created some great chances. Santiago Jimenez should have scored that chance. Right here, I think it was right here, he should have scored this chance. He should have scored. Mexico were terrible in the final third. Were terrible, terrible. Then in the second half, uh, Venezuela started to sh uh, shake things up, and they started to actually cook, and they win that penalty there. And that penalty for me was interesting. So, you know, the penalty there, it was a great combination there from Rondon to Sotaldo. Wins the penalty there. Terrible challenge for Cuneris to give away a penalty, and then up stop Rondon, and Rondon scores. And by the fact for you guys, for those that don't know, Rondon is actually a player that plays the Liga MX. So the fact that he scored against Mexico as a Liga MX player is actually kind of crazy. But anyways, the second half continues. It on, goes on. And then obviously, um, Mexico are pushing for the equalizer. They're pushing, pushing. They had so many chances. The 81st minute, I don't know how they didn't score right here. It was a big, big chance. Sanchez missed. Uh, then obviously, 91st minute, it was a big save from the penalty. And the penalty was a handball. Handball right there. Mexico get a lifeline. And then Binada. Binada misses the penalty. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my jeez. Mexico had so many chances to level the game in stoppage time, but they weren't able to do. And, yeah, Mexico, man, they missed so many chances. Venezuela kind of went pretty defensive after they took the lead, um, and, which is understandable. Well, they were kind of pretty much parking the bus after, like, pretty much like after the 80th minute. Um, knowing that, you know what, let's just park the bus and see this out. And Mexico created so many chances, but they just weren't able to convert. I want to give a shout to someone in the Mexico, uh, Venezuela midfield. That was amazing. I thought Casares, uh, when he came on, he actually made an impact. And you have to give credit to Batistita because he's very, very smart with the substitutions. He always know what the right substitutions to make. And for Mexico, for Jamie Lozano, eh, yeah, it's just Mexico are just poor, so poor. That quality they have up front is so bad. Santiago Jimenez, I'm sorry, the guy's overrated. The guy's overrated, guys. I'm going to say this right now. Santiago Jimenez is overrated. And, yeah, Romo making that big save there from the penalty spot. So, for Venezuela, man, they officially booked a spot in the quarterfinals of the Copa America. And now Mexico are going to be battling against Ecuador for that second-place spot, guys. And let me just say this right now, guys, before I round off. If Mexico gets grouped at the Copa America at the United States, it's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. And it would be embarrassing. So, Mexico better not allow that to happen. So, congratulations to Venezuela. They most likely will top the group because their next game is against Jamaica. They are pretty much already eliminated. So, as long as Ven uh, Jama Venezuela can get at least one point there, they should be good to go top spot. So, anyways, hope you guys did enjoy this review, guys. Please run a like and subscribe. And, yeah, man, Mexico's attack is so garbage. Peace out, guys.